Your perspective then, Jeremy, are we all guns are blazing when it comes to equities today and then will the foot come off the gas? Uh, you know, I think everything points upward. I, I mean, I, the, the light at the end of the tunnel got brighter uh, again this morning. And remember, stocks are the longest lived assets we have. So, yeah, we have a really tough period, I think, the next two or three months. Uh, but then it's downhill for the virus uh, and up for the economy. And that's exactly what the stock market is looking at. Professor, it's interesting. You're at near record highs across the board. How do valuations look to you at this point as we price in bigger growth going out? I, I mean, we're looking right now at about 20, 21 times Next year's earnings for the S&P 500, I actually think next year is going to be better than expected. I think the economy is going to be stronger because of all the pent-up demand that we have and liquidity that we have out there. And actually, I think there's going to be some moderate inflation. I think we're in 2 3 4% inflation, and my research shows that that is not bad for the stock market. Pricing power, uh, higher margins because of the cutting in costs, I think that all this is in the mix of what is on the stockholders' minds, investors' minds right now. What about, Jeremy, those that currently hold big tech, those that hold Zoom video, for example, that's slumping on the back of concerns that maybe we got too exuberant about the valuations, those sort of key tech stocks? Well, they're, they're fully priced. They're, I mean, they're wonderful companies, uh, but my feeling is next year is going to be the reopening trade and the look for yield, because we know Fed is still going to stay slow, people are going to say, well, you know, maybe dividends are, are the only way to go because long bonds, short bonds are just not going to make it. Um, and I think that is another reason why you're going to see a little bit of a trail off of those hot stocks. Now, they really have changed the world, to say the least. But when you're trading at 20, 30, 40 times sales, I don't know how much power is left in them. So tie in some of that equity analysis to the bond analysis that you just mentioned about bond rates staying low, and yet you're also seeing two, three, four percent inflation. How do you get two, three, four percent inflation if the Fed is going to keep yields capped? They're going to keep the short end. Actually, I think long-term rates are going up. I think we're going to see one and a half, two percent next year as these holders say, "Listen." You know, with this inflation, I'm just not going to be able, you know, be able to continue to hold bonds that are just so falling behind inflation. So I think, and I've, I've called this before, that we will look back on 2020 and say this is the end of the 40-year, 40 40-year 40 bull market in bonds that long-term yields will never be as low again. Wow. One to note, Jeremy. I'm interested in your perspective within all of this, therefore, is the U.S. dollar. I'm seeing a note today, Citigroup, saying that the dollar may drop 20 percent next year on the back of this vaccine hope, this optimism. What then of U.S. stocks versus international? Well, I think the dollar will be weak. If you have more liquidity that has been provided, we have had more liquidity in the U.S. than the rest of the world. That puts pressure on the dollar, to, to say the least. It's already moved down. However, a strong economy is generally good for that currency. So there are two conflicting words, but worlds, but I think there's going to be pressure on the dollar in 2021. And we're going to see that because the dollar was very, very high for the last couple of years. And I think that that downward shift will continue. Interesting. Weaker dollar, we sometimes automatically assume strong performance then for international and EM stocks. Do you, too, assume that that is inevitable? Don't give up on the international stocks. Look what's <laughs> happening in Japan. Emerging markets have come back and they will do better in an inflationary environment and a weaker dollar because of the debts that they have. I think for, for many years, us internationals have been suffering under performance. 2021 could very well be that year where they will outperform the U.S. market.